My name is Steve Douthit. I'm a foot and ankle surgeon based out of Eugene, Oregon. Today, I'm going to be presenting Arthrex minimally invasive bunion system using the trajectory system and beveled FT screws. The Arthrex MIS jig is a three component system consisting of a shifting device, which allows the surgeon to derotate the capital fragment and dial in lateral translation. It includes a trajectory guide, which aims the guide wires at the capital fragment. Arthrex also has beveled FT screws. These come in 3.5 and 4.0 millimeter diameter. The screws have a 45 degree beveled head that avoids screw head irritation. It has a constant thread pitch, which translates to no rotation of the capital fragment when inserting the screw. It also includes increased cannulation, which means no skiving and easier throwing of the guide wires. For the first case, I have a 56 year old female complaining of a painful bunion. She's failed conservative treatment and she has heard the horror stories of bunion correction with large incisions and prolonged non-weight bearing. Clinically, she has a large bunion with a medial eminence that's rubbing on her shoe gear, a great toe that abuts the second toe, and radiographically, she has an increased intermetatarsal angle, an increased hallux valgus angle, and a wide forefoot. My plan for this patient was to use the Arthrex minimally invasive bunion system, including the jig, and also using an Arthrex 2.5 millimeter FT comp screw for the Aiken. Here you can see I've created my osteotomy and I'm inserting the shifting device in line with the metatarsal declination angle. I then pin it in place after derotating the capital fragment. Next, I'm able to translate the osteotomy. Afterwards, I attach the trajectory guide to the shifting device. Here you can see the trajectory with the drill sleeve against the first metatarsal base. Here you can see my guide wire placement. The proximal guide wire is bicortical and the distal one is parallel using the MIS jig. Next, I insert the screws. You can see that they're not prominent. They're flush with the medial cortex of the first metatarsal diaphysis. Postoperatively, the patient has a decreased intermetatarsal angle, a decreased hallux valgus angle, and derotation of the capital fragment. The metatarsal width is also noted to be much lower. Here's a clinical image showing pre and postoperative. The patient still has some swelling over the medial eminence as this is only seven days postoperative. Here's the radiographic comparison showing derotation of the capital fragment and rectus alignment of the first ray. For the second case, I have a 65 year old female that complained of a painful bunion. She has trouble wearing shoes and you can see that her medial eminence is red from rubbing on her shoes. Additionally, she has a laterally deviated great toe that abuts the second toe. Radiographically, she has metatarsis seductus, an increased intermetatarsal angle, an increased hallux valgus angle, and a wide forefoot. For this case, I addressed the medial prominence, metatarsis seductus, and frontal plane rotation, all using the Arthrex MIS system with the jig. For the fixation, my plan was to use the 3.5 fully threaded screws, and for phalangeal fixation, using an Arthrex 2.5 fully threaded compression screw. Here you can see me creating the osteotomy and inserting the shifting device in line with the first metatarsal declination angle. I attached the trajectory guide and advanced the guide wires. This is me fixating the first metatarsal and the Aiken osteotomy. Here is my dressing technique. I often don't even use stitches while doing an MIS bunion, and I use a stary strip to splint the digit into a rectus position. Postoperatively, the patient has a drastically improved intermetatarsal angle a derotated capital fragment, and a rectus first ray. Here you can see x-rays comparing the patient preoperative with four weeks postoperative. She has a decreased intermetatarsal angle, a straight first ray, derotation of the capital fragment, including fibular sesamoid covering, along with no screw head prominence. This is a clinical image comparing the patient preoperatively and four weeks postoperatively. She still has some swelling, but the first ray is noted to be rectus. This shows range of motion at four weeks postoperative. The patient's in sneakers at this visit and doing excellent. My postoperative protocol for these patients is weight bearing in a postoperative shoe at day one. If sutures are placed, I remove them at day seven and I apply a compression sleeve with a toe spacer. They're advanced into sneakers at four weeks and I allow full activity eight to 12 weeks on a patient to patient basis. These cases highlight the use of the Arthrex minimally invasive bunionectomy system, consisting of a shifting device, trajectory guide, and drill sleeves. Additionally, it shows the 3.5 and 4.0 millimeter beveled FT screws, which have larger cannulation, they're non-compressive, and they avoid hardware irritation. Thank you.